So this is a public service announcement warning against the dangers of moralistic therapeutic deism, also known as MTD. Each word has meaning, moralistic meaning, that it has a focus on being uh, good or nice, with an emphasis on physical health and improvement, and the belief that God wants us to behave. Therapeutic part meaning that makes it feel good, happy, at peace. And the self, yourself, is at the center. The deism part acknowledges the existence of God, but puts God at a distant wall. The wall of God is to solve our problems and make people feel good. Now that you know what it is named and why this it is named this, it could be bad because the people that li believe in MTD are teenagers, like myself. Teenagers are the future leaders of the world. It was a creed for MTD, Moralistic Therapeutic Deism. So the first one is, a god exists who created and ordered the world and watches over human life on earth. Second, god wants people to be good nice and fair to each other, as taught in the Bible by most world religions. Third, the central goal of life is to be happy and feel good about oneself. Fourth, God does not need to be particularly involved in one's life, except when God is needed to solve a problem, like your car breaking down, something like that. Fifth, good people go to heaven when they die. Not all people that think and live like this go to a church together to sing and pray, like in a synagogue or or church, like in Catholicism. And so, not all people pray, like I said. The belief system has no denominational headquarters and no mailing address. In fact, people that believe this way are not part of the same faith. People that believe in MTD or have this mindset grew up as Catholics, Christians, Jewish. Uh, they are none of these and have instilled... In themselves, the creed of moralistic therapeutic deism. So, by now, you might be saying how I got all this information. There was this guy, Christian Smith, that did a study and compiled all this information called, it was a book called Soul Searching The Religious and Spiritual Lives of American Teenagers. He co-authored with uh, Melinda Lundquist, I believe the name is pronounced, Lundquist Denton, and they interviewed a lot of teenagers, and when it came to deep theological questions, they gave the natural, shrugged the shoulders and said, whatever, like the teenager way is. So what does it say when a teenager, teenager can't articulate what their own religion teaches? Or is it just that teenagers are, are inarticulate in general? Or they just don't know what they're talking about? It might not sound so bad, but there's a challenge. And it is evangelizing a nation that logically insists, con considers itself Christian, but has pretty much no connection to Jesus. We will not know what happens with our future leaders, teenagers, like me. But we can stop them by instilling in them what they lost. They lost the gospel, the teachings of Jesus about the lives of the saints. We do this at home with the parents, also known as the domestic church. Instilling in them the teachings of Jesus in the deep theological questions, what they lost. That's all.